Hi guys and welcome back to Hilltop Farm and welcome to another in our Wiccan series. This is lesson number seven. Let's get straight into the lesson, shall we? This week's lesson is going to be about the witch's altar. Things start to get a bit more hands-on from here on in. So I hope you've been doing all your exercises at home to do with meditation and bringing positive energy into your life but most importantly visualization because you're going to need visualization from here on in we will start this lesson and this is in readiness for the up and coming yule festival the witch's altar there are four must-haves on any wiccan altar these are the pentacle, representing the earth, and it's placed on the west and the west side of your altar. Pentacle. That was one of the printouts in an earlier lesson. I will put another link in this lesson as well down below in case you didn't print one out and you need to, because you'll need one for your Yule altar. All right, so. That's your pentacle. Goblet. Womb shaped and symbolizing water. Now this is placed in the east on your altar. Now these two tools form the these two tools form the horizontal feminine axis. You see that? The phallic shaped wand representing the air is placed in the south part of your altar and the equally phallic shaped athame or sword representing fire is placed in the north now these form the vertical masculine axis now bear in mind what i have just told you applies to witches practicing in the southern hemisphere it will be translated further on for the north but we'll come to that in a minute in nearly every culture the vertical line is a symbol of masculine energy the horizontal line is feminine energy when the vertical masculine line penetrates the horizontal feminine line the ancient pagan symbol of the equal armed cross is produced. This cross is a symbol of life and of life's force. Place a circle around it and you have the circle of the cross or a Celtic cross. Please note the importance of the equal armed cross. If one arm is longer or shorter, then the four elements are out of balance. Do not mistake the Celtic cross pictured below as an out of balance cross. If you look closely, it is an equal arm cross on a pedestal. And I've put a picture on there. It's that one on the page. Probably the one most of you will recognize. You often see it um, in old medieval structures, often in cemeteries, you'll see it. Um, and if you actually look, it should be um, the equal cross on a pedestal, not a cross with a long uh, southern point on it. The Christian cross, which has the long southern point, for example, has an extended south arm, and many historians have commented on Christianity's excess of fire and zeal in the northern hemisphere. Going by traditional information, the elements and directions are as below. For the Southern Hemisphere, the masculine axis, south representing the air and the prevailing wind, north representing the fire and the equator. The feminine axis is east with the water and west for earth. And I don't know whether the picture I'm painting there represents it, but where I'm actually sitting, that is east. 
and that is west, and that is north, and behind me is south. So if I'm pointing in an odd direction and to you watching it looks odd, that's why I'm pointing in that direction. Okay, the northern hemisphere, now this will apply um, to all you budding witches in um, North America, Canada, uh, the UK, Europe, um, who else have we got? We've got a lot from we got people from India and the Philippines and even the Middle East we have people too. Um, now all, all those people, Northern Hemisphere. So when you lay out your altars, this is what you follow. Your masculine axis is the north, is the air and the prevailing wind, and the south is the fire and the equator. Your feminine axis is east with water and west with earth. The feminine axis stays the same, regardless of your hemisphere, it's the male axis that changes. Setting up an altar. In Wicca, there are three main types of altars. When you get your printout, you'll see I've got three examples. They're perhaps not terribly good examples, but they were the best I could find at the time. Um, but it gives you a rough idea. The first one we refer to is a personal altar. And each witch has their own personal altar. That is the altar that you use for your own use. It's the one you use if you are doing work as a solitary witch and you want to do any spell work or anything like that. You use your personal altar. The second one is used for espots. Now we haven't covered espots yet. I think the lesson after next we will start covering espots. They are basically rituals that are to do with the phases of the moon. And the third is used for sabbats, which, as you know, we have covered them in brief. And as of next week's lesson, next week is the first sabbat we will cover in depth, and that is Yule. And you will see the different pictures here. And obviously, you know, they're, they're used for those different things. Um, you can use an Espert altar and a Sabbat altar in a, in a coven, like the coven can use it. Um, obviously a personal altar, well it's a personal altar, that's for doing, when you're doing solitary work, and that's for yours, that's for you only. We begin by choosing items that have spe specific significance to us, that represent a certain element or a certain type of energy. The altars we set up can differ greatly. I've been known to use all three altars in my practice from time to time. And what I mean by that is they'll be set up at the same time. We, for example, uh, my personal altar is set up Virtually most of the time I rarely will take it down. For some years you will get um, a Sabbat and an Espert on the same day or sometimes following days. So you know you can have uh, your meditation time with your personal altar and then go and do uh, work at the altar for the Espert, it would then go to the festival for the Sabbath and attend that altar. So, you know, you can have up to three going at any one time. It's not normal, but you can. Um, it's all great fun. We take physical objects that symbolize what we are drawn to at this point in time, and we can display them in a specific location. That's, for example, um, with the up and coming Yule Festival you might find um, like a Yule log or a, a pine cone or something that has significance for you that you are drawn to. Now, there's no law, no rhyme or reason to say where on your altar that should go. I would put it in the west 
Because I, for me, the pine cone would represent Earth. For you, it might not. You might, um, like, well, for example, I mean, part of, and you'll, we'll learn this next week when we, we cover Yule, but Yule is celebrating the shortest day of the year um, and the longest night. Obviously, it's cold, it's winter, all those things. So one of the things I associate with Yule is cold and winter. Now, where we are, we don't get snow. Well, once in a, well, not even once in a blue moon, it's even rarer than that. But we do occasionally get snow, but what we do get periodically, like everywhere else, we get the odd hailstorm. And I can remember one Yule, a couple of days beforehand, we had this hailstorm that left piles of ha hail dotted about. And we went and got a couple of handfuls and quickly put it in the freezer to freeze it. And we put it in a bowl on the altar and of course it melted but that wasn't the point. The fact was it was this melted snow um, but of course that went um, to represent water obviously but you know for some reason a pine cone might represent air to you for some reason. Um, so. You, Put it, put it there, put it wherever you think it needs to go, okay? And, and that's what Wicca is all about. You, you tailor make it for you. There aren't rules that you have to go by. You, you do what you're happy with, what you're comfortable with. In today's lesson, we'll be focusing on setting up a personal altar. We will start by creating a very simple altar. First thing you need to do is you need to get an altar cloth. I don't think I've, I haven't brought any from a personal altar here, but I'll show you what we've got here. These are altar cloths that have been made by coven members. This one is an altar cloth that has got in bulk written on it. Now this will be used on our altar. Not obviously this coming festival because that's Yule, but the festival after that I think is in bulk and it will be used there um, to decorate, well, as, as the altar clock. Um, and it's all decorated in those sorts of, of colours. Um, it's to do with um, the this sort of onset of spring coming so it's got sort of watering cans and flowers and and uh, vegetables on it um things like that so it's representative of that this one was the one we used at the last festival which was the sam hain festival and if you can see that okay all the colors that represented or represents Sam Hain are on there. And again, a few pumpkins on the fabric. I don't know if you can see it around there. This one here, what's this one? By the look of it, is the uh, an altar cloth for Lammas, which is a harvest festival. And on there, there's all sorts of fruits and vegetables and what are the strawberries, peas, um, looks like peaches and grapes and nectarines and apricots and all sorts. So you can be really inventive. If you can't find the patterns, like the, the right pattern uh, on, on the fabrics, just go with the colours. But uh, my wife is does quilting, so if you can't find these sorts of fabrics at a normal fabric shop, I know she she goes to places specifically for um, uh, quilting quilting fabric, uh, even online. I think she's even got some on eBay before now. So. You can often find what you're looking for on there and you can either make the the altar cloths in 
a whole piece of that fabric or you can cut out the you know the fruits or the flowers or whatever's on there that you want and, and do it like an applique thing so that's to start off with altar cloth but like everything else it's expensive you don't necessarily you can't afford to dive in and do that if you can't afford it then find a nice plain pillowcase or a new clean tea towel or something like that and use that as an altar cloth it's perfectly okay perfectly okay we didn't have any of this when we started and we, we just start collecting it over the years and every now and then one will be replaced um, either because it gets old or because Helen sees a particular fabric that she likes the look of and so she will make a, a new one I'm fairly certain she said to me earlier that she was planning on making a new one for this Yule which hopefully if she does I'll be able to show you in the next lesson um, but yes but keep it simple don't break the bank and obviously your own personal one there isn't a theme like with you there is with the um, the festivals you just go with something you're drawn to I mean currently on mine it's purely and simply a piece of purple satin that's all it is there's nothing there's nothing on it um, the one I'm using now is just a plain square of purple satin that's um, been hemmed so you, you don't have to be a super sewer you really don't you can you do something very basic and it still looks very effective okay so that's it on on um, altar cloths start by placing the four mandatory objects on your altar each time you place it on the altar stop and consider the item consider the energy behind them and visualize what they represent to you your subconscious and this is the sort of thing I didn't believe beforehand. But it is true. It, I don't know how. It does do it. Your subconscious will instinctively build a bridge in between the object and the corresponding energy, as well as the meaning that the object holds to you. And I think what it does, it purely and simply, it just becomes a trigger. If you associate this with rain for example then every time you see that it's instinctively what you'll think of even if you don't consciously think of it think of rain it, it does it does do that um i, I guess it's much the same way as a, a treasured family heirloom um it could be a vase but every time you look at the vase you think of your grandmother and your grandmother isn't a vase but it's that mental connection between the object and the energy and this works in much the same way next you need to add everything else to your altar that your inner self is telling you should be there there's pretty much nothing that's banned from an altar and with a personal altar and that's really what we're dealing with at the moment you can put anything on there and it doesn't have to stay there with a personal altar it can be different every time you set it up if you have it permanently set up it changes every day um, what's important to you to have on there this week may not be as important to you next week something else may may override that um, you might put extra things on you might decide that it's too cluttered and and there's too much psychic energy going on so you can clear it off and, and make it simpler um, it doesn't matter you add what you want when you want you put it where you want and it, it depends what it represents to you and all these things are it's like I said right in the beginning with trying to wake up that primal part of your brain that keeps you in touch with 
the seasons and, and nature and that kind of thing. It is, everything, everything is a trigger. Everything is there to, to represent something and to, to trigger it in your brain. And this is the same thing. Everything we put on the altar is there to represent something, to trigger uh, a sensation, a thought within the brain or, or a sensation, whether it be um, sound, smell, taste, uh, a feeling of warmth and coziness or whatever it is. Um, so it's, it's very personal and you, you will know uh, as you go through your daily life what you want to be on there. But when you put it on there, no matter what it is, think about what it represents. Is it a feminine or a masculine energy? Does it have any affinity with one of the elements or one of the directions? north, south, east or west. Asking these questions will help you decide where to position it on the altar. If you can't find it fits into any of the categories, merely place the item in a manner which is pleasing to the heart and the eye. Remember as you place it to visualise the energy you are associating with it. Remember you feel a connection to it. When you feel a connection to it, place it on the altar stating why you are placing it in this place. For example, I might place a crystal and say, this crystal represents the earth, therefore I place you in the west. Once you have completed this, sit before your altar and visualize the circle or bubble around you as protection. The one we did from last week. Visualize that bubble remaining in place to protect your altar once you get up and walk away. When you have completed this, record your results in your journal. Record the placement, the visualization of each, and the reason you placed it the way you did. Your personal altar can be left up for as long as you feel comfortable leaving it so. Many witches leave their altar up all the time, tending to it daily, and record the slow changes as it revolves throughout the year. Remember the altar and its maintenance depend on you. Keep it physically beautiful with live flowers and beautiful objects that invigorate your spirit. Remember, the tools do not make the witch. The witch makes the tools. And your main altar is a temple in your heart. Now, that's the end of this week's lesson. It's very simple, really. This week's assignment. There is a lot to do and it needs to be done because next week's lesson is about, uh, it is actually on the Yule Festival. And I know the last couple, I think, uh, of lessons have been 12 hours late being being released. Next one is going to have to be on time because Yule is actually, it's either, from memory, it's either the day after or the day after that, but I can't remember, but it's pretty close. So this homework has to be done on time before next lesson, or it, you will be really running around like a mad chook, chook as a chicken for anyone who doesn't know. Um, next week so this is what I want you to do I want you to set up and maintain your own personal altar if you do not have all your tools yet you can improvise again I do not want you going out and spending a load of money and breaking the household budget wicker is not something that should be sending your household bankrupt you gather it and collect it frugally and as you can afford it, and it's a slow process, for the rest of your life from now on, you will be collecting Wiccan paraphernalia. Don't race out and buy anything just for this. This is what I want you to do. If you improvise, for example, you can use a stick out of the garden for your want. A wine glass as a goblet, as long as it's non-plastic and a non-plastic knife 
from your cutlery drawer as your athame or sword. Those three objects you can improvise quite easily out of the average person's kitchen. The only thing you may have trouble with, depending on what you have in your house, is you may not have a wine glass. Just a normal glass will do if you don't have a wine glass. It doesn't matter. And as I say, that is why I gave, because the other fourth one, of course, is the pentagram. That's why I provided that earlier in the piece, because that will give you something to work with until you come up with something more elaborate. What I use on mine, I don't know if you can see this here, if I put a back, if I put a dark back to it, it may be a bit more work. I don't know. Does that work? I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, in this glass sphere is etched a pentagram in the middle, and that's what I use on mine. But as I say, I've given that for you to use in the meantime. Remember, you collect your tools as you find them and you're drawn to them. Start collecting things for your Yawl altar. This will be anything that you think will go with the theme of Yawl. And bear in mind the Yule colours are your Christmas reds and greens, white and gold. They're your four Yule colours. And I say Christmas because we all know what a Christmas green and a Christmas red looks like. Those colours are the same for Yule. And of course, that's where Christian stole Christmas from originally. But we won't go into that, will we? We had Yule long before they had Christmas. So apart from those colours, anything that you might be drawn to that represents Yule and the long winter nights. And after Yule is the slow rebirth of the sun. So that's really what we're, what we're celebrating. So anything that you find in your travels that draws you to it and you think is along those lines, keep it for your Yule altar. Also, all those sewing witches out there, you might like to try your hand at ra running up a Yule altar cloth in the Yule colours. I told you what the colours are, so you might want to do that if you are particularly handy with a needle and thread. In the meantime, a good witch will make do, as I said, a nice tea towel or pillowcase will do the job just as well. Also, start planning your Yule festival menu and shop in readiness so that you don't have a last minute rush. Again, there is no hard and fast rule for what you have for you. We have the traditional turkey with all the trimmings. We have roast vegetables. We have about, I don't know, eight different vegetables with it. Uh, as I say, there's turkey, there's stuffing. We have a plum pudding and custard afterwards. So that's generally what we will serve for Yule, but you don't have to. Bearing in mind that it is, I know a lot of it, it's all gonna be out of whack um, until until we get the hemispheres right. But as I say, we're, we're learning this the Southern way. So, Normally, you celebrate Yule in the middle of winter, so there are the kinds of dishes you've got to think about. Plan accordingly, as so there is no hard and fast rules with Yule about what you should and shouldn't have, except the emphasis with all Wiccan catering is the emphasis on fresh produce. Where you can, you buy fresh, organic, you and that's being realistic where you can I know not everybody can afford it and that's fine but use fresh ingredients as opposed to anything that comes out of a packet one thing uh, as Wiccans because we want to be in touch with mother nature and the earth we want to eat as much natural food as possible and get rid of processed foods and factories and 
you know, all these sorts of things. So try and go as green as possible with your, your celebration meal and get as much from the butcher and the greengrocer and the produce store, whatever it is you call it in your country and, you know, make proper custard rather than ready-made custard in a bottle. It's all those little things that, that make a difference to, to your celebration. So, it looks with all of that, there's lots to be done for homework and there's lots of planning to do before the next lesson. So, as I've written down in here, just to be comical, wiggle those noses and get to it. That is the end of this week's lesson. Thank you for joining us. Any books that you require, um, doesn't have to be for Wicca, it can be for any other purpose. Um, they, we are an affiliate to the Book Depository in the UK, has free shipping worldwide and extremely reasonable prices. If you go in the description below, there will be a link to the Book Depository. If you click on that link and make your purchases through that link, then the channel gets uh, a couple of dollars from your purchase to help us run the channel. So that would be much appreciated if you do that. Um, the handout for today's lesson is down there. You need to download that to your computer and or print it out. Uh, again, I shall put the link to the pentagram down below as well. So if you didn't print it out in the lesson um, that we did on uh, magical tools, you can print it out again for use on your either your personal altar or your Yule altar both it doesn't make any difference and if you want to have both set up when it comes to you print out too and again that's the link down that uh, below if for some reason you've stumbled across this lesson and it's the first one you've stumbled across we're up to number seven you've missed out on a few but also in the description below there will be a link to the playlist if you click on there it'll start with the introduction and then all the lessons up to the current one we're running uh, are all down there for you to have a look at. I did initially say, I think in that introduction, that I was only going to make these things available in the first four lessons, I think. And after that, they were only going to be available to Patreons. I decided against that. I didn't... I don't feel comfortable doing that, to be honest. There was something that was not sitting well with me about that. I feel if any of you out there want to learn how to walk the Wiccan path, then who am I to stop you? And I'm, I don't feel comfortable taking, taking your money to teach you to do that. What I will be doing, however, <laughs> is uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it. We will be running uh, mid mid-year exams or I think some countries call them midterms we'll be running those exams uh, as well as the final end of year exams but the way I'm going to do those is they won't be run through YouTube you'll have to register interest beforehand to to do that and once you register to do that there'll be a one-off payment probably to PayPal um, of a reasonable amount, it, it's not going to be anything astronomical, to uh, sit the test and then get a certificate once you pass. So I'm yeah, going to do things that way. And those of you that don't want to sit the exams and don't want a certificate um, can carry on doing the lessons and you don't have to pay anything. But it's nice to have the certificate at the end and for the small amount we're going to charge you, it would be nice for you to support the channel and to help pay for us bringing this to you. But as I say, I understand not everyone can afford to. So if that's the case, then the, the lesson's still open to you. All right. Uh, and just quickly, the other thing that will be in the description below, as always, is the email address to the school. It's uh, Hilltop school of witchcraft all one word at outlook.com uh, if you got a question or a problem 
and you don't want to leave a comment for everyone else to see, you can keep it private by emailing me direct at the school. So I think that's about it. Thank you for coming along with me for the ride today. If you liked the lesson, give us a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any other lessons. And until next week, it's goodbye from Hilltop Farm. See ya.